Is there even a Pokemon type edgier than Poison type? Dark and Ghost? Well, that didn't take long. But yeah, I guess so. But Poison is still pretty edgy. Media often portrays thieves and assassins using poisoned daggers and poisoned flasks as dark and evil sort of thing. And it kind of is. Poisoning someone is rude. Like, you could just kill them here and now, but instead, you poison them to make them suffer for their final moments. It's messed up. But I guess it's also entirely natural. There are so many venomous and poisonous insects and reptiles and even a few mammals and birds. And the plants! Oh god, I'm so allergic to poison oak. As a kid, it hospitalized me. It made my eyes and esophagus swell shut. Uh, nature is scary. So honestly, if I were to get hit by a Pokemon move, I'm pretty sure a poison type move would be the last one I'd want to get hit by. But hey, let's go ahead and explain all of the poison type moves in Pokemon. Explain what they do, whether or not it's poison or venom, and just have some fun. Gather your antidotes, and let's get started. Hello! You need a VPN, just telling it to you straight. It's true though, because without a VPN, I know all about you and your little hobbies. You like Pokemon and enjoy breathing oxygen. You most likely enjoy Smash Brothers, possibly dipping your toes into Alpharad's sphere of the pool from time to time, the Nintendo meme funny man. And oh yes, I know that 53.6% of you are from the United States. Most of you are male young adults, for now at least. And I can even see what other videos most of you watch. YouTube analytics are getting crazy, tracking every Thing, and I can just see so much of that, and that's just what they make available to YouTubers! So maybe that's creepy to you. So maybe you should try NordVPN, today's sponsor. That's right, with NordVPN, you can not just be another statistic, but an actual person, free from targeted advertisements and all of that tracking. Want to watch BBC, but you're not British? Well, with NordVPN, you can be whatever you want, darling. Especially thanks to the higher security it provides, too. NordVPN keeps all of that traffic data encrypted. So that it stays your little secret. Free! And protect yourself before you get wrecked yourself. Go to nordvpn.com slash Loxton or use the code Loxton to get a two-year plan with a discount plus one additional month for free. For our first category, let's do the type's namesake, the moves that are very clearly actually poison. And that means we gotta define it. Poison, a substance that is capable of causing the illness or death of a living organism when introduced or absorbed. That's pretty straightforward. Colloquially, venomous animals actively inject you with their toxic venom through a bite or a sting. Whereas, poisonous things are things that are bad for you to eat or come into contact with. Poison dart frogs secrete poison and you do not want to touch them. Poison oak and ivy have waxy leaves covered in poison, and you do not want to touch them. Tide pods, while great for cleaning, are poisonous when swallowed. Heck, alcohol is technically a poison, but it is a mild one that humans happen to like the effect of. And have you heard of iron or water poisoning? Take too much of either and you get really sick, as it does damage to your body. Really, so many things can technically be considered a poison. It's all just a matter of what the dosage is. So clearly, poison dart frog poison is worse for you than water, though both can still kill you. Now I'm sure poison type Pokemon are more along the lines of poison dart frogs and less along the lines of just a lot of water. Hmm. Let's start with the move, Toxic Thread. Ooh. Let's look up the definition of toxic. Poisonous. Well, at least it's to the point. This is the signature move of Ariados, where it shoots poisonous spider webs all around its opponent to both slow them down and poison them. Spiders are one of the more well-known venomous animals, so it having a signature poison move is pretty good, even though poison and venom are sort of different things, but we'll get to that. When it comes to spiders, most of them have to actively bite you for their venom to work, while most of their webs aren't poisonous at all. Most of them. Meet the Triconfig. Villa Clevipes or Clevipes. Uh, I'm just gonna call it the banana spider because that's also what it's known as. It's the banana spider. It's a lot easier to say. While the banana spider spins its web, it secretes a neurotoxin all over it, making its web technically poisonous. When a bug touches the web, not only do they get stuck to its stickiness, but the poison eventually reaches their brain and shuts down their nervous system, paralyzing them. <laughs> Aren't spiders wonderful? Let's look at something docile and nice, like plants. With the move Poison Powder, the user scatters a cloud of poisonous dust that poisons the target. And looking at the Pokemon that learned this move, they are all grass type or are bug type moths. We'll get to that. But this move is essentially the poisonous plant move. Generally speaking, plants don't want to be eaten. Their fruit, yes. Themselves, no. Thus, various plants develop things like capsaicin, thorns, and 
poison. Most of the time, the poison only acts if the plant is eaten. Like water hemlock being absorbed by your stomach, which then actively turns your blood itself into a neuromuscular junction toxin, which will make you feel drunk until you die in as little as 15 minutes. Scary! But that's what happens when your brain's breathing and heart beating signal can't reach the lungs or heart anymore. As for the powder, that likely refers to pollen. Pollen by itself is functionally a sort of poison to those of us with allergies, which on its own would be enough to justify this move, but we can go deeper. Some plants, like the pea plant and the aconitum, will actively poison their own pollen. If a bee goes in to drink its nectar, it gets the poisonous powdery pollen on it and brings it back to its hive, spreading throughout it. It irritates the bee's digestive tract and can be fatal if they have too much of it. Producing nectar takes a lot of energy, and some plants do not just want to share that willy-nilly. So they have co-evolved to have pollen that's poisonous to certain species, but not others, as well as only poisonous if the bees happen to get really greedy. See, even nature wants to kill bees. But how about those moth Pokemon? Well, moth are already known to be covered in a sort of moth dust, hence dust docks. In reality, they are shedding their wing scales all the time, and they also tend to hide in really dusty areas, and so are just covered in normal dust on top of their own scales shedding. But on top of that, there are in fact poisonous moths. Stomach aches if you eat them, and hives if you come into contact with them. So both plants and moths have this association with powders and poisons, and thus moth and plant Pokemon are the ones to learn poison powder. Oh, also ricin. Ricin exists. It's it's terrible. It's just a poisonous powder that destroys your lungs at the cellular level. Don't. Now, powder isn't the only way poisons go airborne. There's also poisonous gas. Ha ha ha. So many wonderful gases. So awful and inhumane that using many of them against enemy soldiers is considered a war crime. But I guess it's fine to use them on your own citizens. Mustard gas, tear gas, chlorine, oh boy. And then there's the silent killer, carbon monoxide. This gas is the most common type of fatal air poisoning in most countries. You can't see it, can't smell it, and can't taste it. How wonderful is that? Oh, and it's produced by burning fossil fuels? How wonderful. How does it kill you? A dizzying headache that turns into seizures and bleeding eyeballs because the molecular makeup of your blood is wrong? Great! But yeah, uh, this is a Pokemon move. A poisonous cloud of gas is forcefully expelled to poison the target. There's all sorts of different gases it could be. I'm sure it's different depending on the Pokemon using it, like Galarian wheezing, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, Salazzle, probably hydrogen sulfide, or sulfur dioxide. Those come from thermal vents and volcanoes. Skun tank? Well, that's just farts. Oh, and I guess these gases would also explain the move smog. The target is attacked with a discharge of filthy gases. This may also poison the target. Smog is typically a lot darker colored. It's the beautiful haze you see over major cities that are too scared to use nuclear energy, which would solve all of our energy and global warming problems while we wait for renewable technology to advance more. And looking at the Pokemon that learn smog, there's a lot of fire types here, likely to reference those vents and volcanoes again. And I mean, the smog in these cities does come from burning fossil fuels after all, so fire type. Now, venom drench and venom a shock. Based on the names, you would assume they were venomous moves, not poisonous. But no, it's poison. And guess what? Most of the actually venomous moves are the ones that actually have the word poison in their own name. Isn't Game Freak just the best? Both Venom Drench and Venoshock douse poisonous liquid all over the opponent. I mean, even the description of Venoshock still has the word drenches in it. Where they differ is in their game mechanics. Venom Drench lowers the attack, special attack, and speed stats of a poisoned target, and Venoshock doubles in power if the target is already poisoned. Interestingly, they both have already poisoned mechanics. What's up with that? Well, if you have a poison in your body, you typically want an antidote and not more poison. That is what's up with that. The only thing worse than being poisoned is having your body fail on you due to more poison. Doing things like making it harder to move your muscles, which neurotoxins do, that would certainly reduce your speed and attack. And going into shock is a medical term that does so much damage to your body. And of course, poison is capable of causing it, though typically only if there's a lot of it, hence Venoshock. It's really bad and does a lot of damage. Now for the um actually they should be venom type moves moves, even though the actual definition of venom is a poison that is actively injected. So really, all venom is poison, but not all poison is venom. It's that whole thing. So I guess most of them having the word poison in the name isn't bad. It's just kind of dumb because of those two moves named after venom that aren't venom. Anyway, let's start with poison sting. It's really the most apparent and obvious poison type move there is. Insects bite, they sting, and typically defend themselves from things that are bigger than them, things that they would have 
have no chance against without the added help of being venomous. It gives a deterrent to their attackers. Oh, you gonna fight me? You better be careful. <laughs> Wasps, ants, scorpions, they all have venomous stingers, and they all contain chemicals that cause nerves to go off, essentially making the sting significantly more painful than it would actually be otherwise. I mean, it's just like a near microscopic thumbtack poked you, like, yeah, it hurts, but it's just like, ow. But no, now there's venom that tells your nerves that this is the most intense pain possible. <laughs> and some of these stings even have lingering side effects like dizziness, nausea, trouble breathing, but for the most part, humans won't die from them. And this is very similar to how poison jab functions. The target is stabbed with a tentacle, arm, or the like seeped in poison. This may also poison the target. Nido King, Sea King, Ariados, they got poisonous horns, so those horns are pretty much just like extra large stingers. Tentacruel? Well, jellyfish tentacles will mess you up. Just brushing against a box jellyfish tentacle causes tissue necrosis, meaning the part of your body that touched it is literally rapidly dying at the cellular level, and it spreads, and it's extremely painful, and deadly, and this Pokemon here is actively trying to jab you with it. That's why it's cruel. As for the arm in that description, I'm sure that's for Krogunk. The move was added the same time it was, and that's like its whole thing, punching you with its poisonous arms. It's a poison dart frog, which used batrachotoxins to cause paralysis to the point of death. It just stops your heart from being able to move. Great. Then poison fang, another obvious one. Snake fangs are literally injection needles. The most common snake venom causes limb numbness, weakness, nausea, and blurred vision, but it can get as bad as a loss of consciousness and death. Poison tail is an interesting one. You would think it's referring to like Gligar or Skaroopy, but they don't naturally learn the move at all. Naturally, of course, meaning via level up rather than through TM breeding or a trainer. The move is described as the user hits the target with its tail. This may also poison the target. And that sounds very generic. So I guess this move could be just poisonous or venomous depending on the user. So Viper is definitely venomous with its blade tail, but Gudra? I guess its tail is coated in poisonous goo and now some of it's stuck on you. You touched it, it's gross. It's poison. Cross poison is a slashing attack that may also leave the target poisoned. It has a high critical hit ratio. Really, it's just scratch with sharp poison coated claws. It's similar in concept to Shell Sidearm, the signature move of Galarian Slowbro. Now, we know that the Shell Dur on Slowbro and Slowking is venomous. Various Pokedex entries mention that it releases toxins into them as it bites down. This theoretically is why Slowking is so smart. So, in the case of this move, it's just hitting the opponent with its venomous shelter friend. What's neat though is that this move can inflict physical or special damage based on which would be stronger. When physical, you just get hit by its toxic spikes, but when special, you get shot with poison. So I guess this is also either or, venom or poison. It's only venomous when physical. Hmm. Baneful Bunker is another venomous signature move, this time belonging to Toxapex. Toxapex is based on the Crown of Thorns Starfish, which has a super mean venom found in its spikes. It's a neurotoxin that causes intense, sharp pain that lasts hours. Like, think of the pain of actively being stabbed. Not just like, oh, you're stabbed and that hurt and now it's kind of sore, but you know, at least you're not actively being stabbed. No, it's the initial stabbing pain, but always for hours. And the pain itself is bad enough that it causes nausea and vomiting just because the brain can't handle the pain. It's baneful indeed. Then toxic. I'm not sure if I'd count this one as poisonous or venomous either. It's kind of both. So a uh, new category, I guess? You could, we could probably throw some of the old ones in here too. The category is it's kind of both. I mean, the move toxic is so generic in name even, and so many Pokemon learn it naturally, and the ones that don't learn it naturally can learn it through TM. All but 23 Pokemon prior to Gen 8 are able to learn it via TM. And if we don't count the ones that eventually evolve into Pokemon who can learn it through TM, we're left with only six, and all six of them have gimmicks that explain why. This is worthy of a video on its own, but I'm sure the idea is that any living thing can potentially be toxic, metaphorically speaking, and literally. I mean, we all poop. We all have bacteria in and on us. We all spread germs, coughing and sneezing. These are all things that can make others sick. Heck, did you know that deep tissue human bites are potentially lethal? We are not venomous. We just have all sorts of nasty viruses and bacteria in our mouths that infects our victims. Fun fact I found out while researching this, did you know that 20% of all reported bite-related injuries in Germany are from humans? What are you doing over there? 
Cat claws are another good example. Cats aren't venomous, but their claws can be covered in all sorts of nasty germs. When they bury their poop, they get the dirt and the poop all over it. And that's why cat scratch fever is a thing. So yeah, just about anything can be toxic. Anything besides medical robots punching bags and cosmic horrors, that is. Then with toxic spikes, the user lays a trap of poisonous spikes at the feet of the opposing team. The spikes will poison opposing Pokemon that switch into battle. It's just the move spikes, but extra spicy. The user could be scattering a bunch of old stingers on the ground, or like, shedded horns, a bed of thorns. Poisonous thorns are poisonous, and they do pierce the skin, but do they actively inject their poison, thus making it venom? You know? Hmm. But also, since Garboder can learn this move, perhaps it's just generic in nature. I'm sure Garboder just throws a bunch of sharp, gross trash, which can cause things like tetanus, or a simple bacterial infection. And speaking of Garboder, new category time! That's nasty. With Gunk Shot, the user shoots filthy garbage at the target to attack. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory, and in the anime, it's only been used by Garboder. And look at this! That's just like a glowing trash bag! In the games, it kind of just looks like, well, gunk? Sticky goo. Gross bubbles. But then, I love the Gen 6 animation because it literally throws a metal trash can. <laughs> uh, clearly, that hurts. And trash often has decaying food scraps in it, or sharp, rusty metal bits, used tissues, waste. You know, things that'll get you sick. Now, there's three sludge moves. Sludge, sludge bomb, and sludge wave. And they too are pretty self-explanatory. Sludge is gross. Especially since raw sewage is typically a sludge. <laughs> And that explains Sludge Wave. Sewer surfing! Sludge then just throws a handful of the stuff, and Sludge Bomb does the same, but more so. So much that it explodes all over them. It's disgusting. But at least it's not G-Max Malodor, the signature move of Gigantamax Garboder. Garboder at this size is a living garbage dump, and it's just seeping trash juice all over you, and then geysers it up? Gee, to the roast! Even just doing that with water Water would hurt, and this is trash water filled to the brim with germs! Eww. Then with Belch, the user lets out a damaging belch at the target. The user must eat a held berry to use this move. Sometimes when we eat, we swallow air. That air needs to come back up, and that's why we burp. But if we happen to be digesting certain foods, well, that air was just in your stomach accumulating rotten smells. I know my wife hates when I eat pork chops. The burps are the worst. And in Pokemon, that smell can be damaging. Especially if the burper's stomach is filled with poisonous things already because they are poison type, or because they're like Snorlax who is able to just eat poison and be fine. But speaking of the stomach, new category, acid. Is acid poison? Didn't have to think about that too long. Yes, it causes irritation and damage on contact or ingestion. Acid burns are no joke. Acid, acid spray, and gastro acid are all moves similar in concept. The user hurls up its stomach acids on the foe. The user spits fluid that works to melt the target. Opposing Pokemon are attacked with a spray of harsh acid. While gastro acid is clearly stomach acid in name and in description, the other two could also be regular sort of acid sprays, which numerous animals are capable of doing, like the spitting cobra, wood ants, and bombardier beetles. To explain why acids burn and melt things would take forever, so here's a super short and simple summary. Most acids are proton donors. They get into whatever they are melting at the molecular level, giving them protons, breaking up their own bonds, just forcing itself in there, and then they evaporate or dissolve after doing the damage. It just comes in to deal as much damage to the molecular unity as possible before just up and leaving. Rude, and clear to see why these moves do damage. Their secondary effects are interesting though, acid reduces defense, as many acids are used to dissolve metal or bone rapidly, so just melting the enemy's defensive shell. Acid spray reduces special defense. Special defense is a sort of mental defense, but it has some physical properties as well. It's a bit complicated when you really start trying to quantify it, but I know that if parts of me were actively burning, I'd be pretty mentally distressed. They don't want to deal with these stupid ants anymore. And gastro acid eliminates the effect of the foe's ability. And there's an odd one. I guess sometimes it makes sense, like the ability battle armor. It's melted now. Fluffy? Now you're bald. Dry skin? How about no skin? Anger point? I feel like this would make them more angry. Hmm. 
Corrosive gas is also acid, but in gaseous form. Talk about a spicy butthole. The user surrounds everything around it with a highly acidic gas and melts away items they hold. As previously mentioned, there are poisonous gases, and some of them are poisonous because of how acidic they are, like hydrogen sulfide, and even carbon dioxide, technically. Then, acid downpour, also known as acid poison delete in Japanese. This is the poison type Z-move. The user creates a poison in a swamp using its Z-power and sinks the target into it at full force. The description says poison swamp, and swamps are pretty icky and poisonous and cause disease, but the name and animation say acid rain. Remember those volcanoes that release poisonous gases? Well, when it rains, the water traps those gases and the rain becomes acidic. It causes a lot of damage all over the place and generally is not a good day to walk the dog. So with the Z-power, they make acid rain and an acid puddle, and then they dip their opponent into said puddle like they're trying to dissolve a murdered corpse in a tub, except they only faint and are fine. Hmm. Should have used Max Ooze, the generic poison type Dynamax move. In Japanese, the name of it is Dye Acid, so this liquid is acidic ooze, and it just do what acid do. But a lot, there's a lot more of it, because big new category. It's just Pukamuku, or I guess other, because this move does not fit any of the other categories. This category has the move Purify exclusively in it. Purify is the signature move of Pukamuku, the punchy sea cucumber. Using it makes it heal another Pokemon's non volatile status condition, such as being poisoned, and heal half of its own HP. Sea cucumbers are pretty resilient and poisonous. They have holothurin, which causes extreme weakness and permanent blindness. <laughs> Lovely. But that doesn't explain this move. A poison move that heals? Well, it could be seen as a reference to how humans have used venoms and poisons to make all sorts of treatments and cures for things. Heck, right now scorpion venom is being used to treat brain cancer. So yes, a poison can be used to heal. It's science. It's cool, but why would sucking up someone else's paralysis heal you, though? Huh. Well, some say that there are health benefits to eating sea cucumbers. The non-toxic ones, of course. Eating them can help speed up your own wound healing and make you generally healthier thanks to their neuroprotective, anti-tumor, anti-coagulant, antimicrobial, and antioxidant effects. Man, that's, that, that's just a list of things that want to kill you, huh? So maybe there's something there. But perhaps more specifically, this move is magically manifesting one of the primary abilities of the sea cucumber into an attack. To quote National Geographic, sea cucumbers are the purifying species for the ocean. See, they even use the word purifying. Feeding on scraps of food, the creatures spend their lives inhaling salt water and expelling clear liquid and sediment. In many areas, their depletion has led to murkier, more polluted coastal waters. So clearly, they quite literally clear the icky gross gunk out of the water by eating it. And eating, in video games, Pokemon included, tends to be how you heal, because that's literally how it works. So it's sucking all of the bad stuff out of the target, purifying it, and healing itself. Awesome! Now, final category time! The poison type Pokemon moves that truly should not be poison type. In my opinion, anyway. And there's only three- N No, shouldn't the Venom moves all not be because Venom and poison are different? And the first move is Acid Armor. You'd think Acid. So yeah, Acid is poison, but there isn't inherently any Acid involved in the move at all. The move's Japanese name is just Liquify, even. The user alters its cellular structure to liquefy itself, sharply raising its defense stat. And I guess acid is capable of altering cellular structure, because that's what it does, but it isn't inherently needed. And normally acid removes things, thus all of the other acid moves lowering defense. And if you look at the Pokemon that learned this move, most are already viscous. Alchemy is whipped cream, Melton is mercury, Cryogonal and Vanillish, they're literally ice, Vaporeon and Fion can practically melt into water, Muck is muck! So I assume the original intent here is that they are all actively making their bodies more liquid-like, because it's harder to do damage to liquids compared to solids. I mean, go punch some water and see what you do to it. I assume this move is poison type because back when the move was first made, it was basically the signature move of Muck. Though Vaporeon could learn it too. It's got crazy cell structure powers though. So it's sort of the same reason withdraw is water type. Going into your shell to defend yourself isn't inherently watery whatsoever, but all of the Pokemon who knew the move in Gen 1 were water type. So just make the move water type too. There you go. That's what they did, but with poison. Up next, clear smog. Smog is poisonous, absolutely, but the act of clearing it though? Would adding more smog to the air clear the smog that's already there? Is it like how most anti-venoms are made from venom, but it's air pollution instead? Wait! 
It's not even smog! The description says, The user attacks the target by throwing a clump of special mud. All stat changes are returned to normal. What? Yeah, mud. It's gross and icky, I guess. There's germs. Mud is found in swamps. Swamps are filled with disease. I don't know, but this move is harmful, like a poison, if the opponent is buffed because it makes all of their raised stats lowered and normal again. But if their stats have been reduced, this move helps them. I guess most medicine can become a poison if you have too much of it. Eh, it just doesn't feel right. But I'll chalk this one up to interpretation. If you don't like this move in the not category, just pretend it's in the other category. However, this last move, I don't really think you can argue in favor of being poison type. The move is Coil. Like with Withdraw having nothing to do with water, coiling has nothing to do with poison. Sure, leeches, snakes, and centipedes are venomous and are capable of coiling, but freaking this ferret can coil too. So what? The move's effect is fine though. The user coils up and concentrates. This raises its attack and defense stats as well as its accuracy. It's like what cobras do when getting ready to strike. They first take a defensive pose, coiling around themselves, then raise their head, ready to attack and strike accurately. So yeah, the move has an association with a venomous creature, but the move in and of itself is not poisonous at all. So it should not be poison type. And that is that. That was the video. Oh, and uh, remember all that stuff I said that I know about you back during the NordVPN promo? Well, I also know that half of you watching are subscribed. Thanks so much for that. You're awesome. And the rest of you should maybe consider hitting that big subscribe button too. I promise you won't regret it. Especially if you're like most of the rest of the audience here, male, American or British, like Pokemon and Smash Bros. A lot of you have been watching a lot of MNJ TV and True Green 7 and the game theorists and Terminal Montage too. It even tells me which videos specifically. NordVPN. It lets you keep your secrets and never stop using your noggin.